It was at this moment that he knew. He bucked up. Welcome. You're listening to Bucked Up with Sam Buck. Thank you so much for being on, man. Thank you, Sam. You uh, are great for inviting me. Thank you. Of course. Is this your first podcast? Um, I maybe video recorded. Yeah. Yeah, we we are fancy up in this bitch. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I came to New York just just for this interview. You better feel fucking oh, special. <laughs> the pressure's on. The pressure is on. No, you uh, to introduce you, you are a uh, a clothing designer and artist and you have a shirt a shop not a, a fly life which is what what's the address 434 east 11th street 434 <laughs> east 11th street do you think yeah those, those are all my drops that i have i like it i, I like, like it. ad libs for my podcast it's dope <laughs> but do you how would you describe yourself artist um yeah i guess yeah i, I did you? Yeah. <laughs> it's like I don't know. Some, yeah, artist is fine. Artist well, yeah. is fine. What would you rather be known as? Yeah, an NBA All Star. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the height. I'm sorry. You might have the skills. I know, man. I, it's, if only we could like switch. You right, had my height. Be, that would be that. I would have a much better chance. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, yeah. "Fuck these clothes, fuck these masks." I'm just play. I want to be in the bubble right now. Yeah, that would be nice. I I mean, I grew up playing ball, so like, that's that was kind of like, art and ball was like my first two like passions. Art and so, ball. Well, basketball. Yes. Yeah, no. Yeah. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> yeah, basketball. I uh my dad was a real good athlete, D one athlete. So like sports I never I don't know, they were kinda his thing. I didn't it was like I don't know. Was mu- he was a musician. He is a musician too. Cool. So that's why I uh I like comedy because it's kinda like my thing. Like that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my thing. There's no one else that No, did. I was having comedy shows in the shop last year before COVID. That was fun. Were you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, who who did you have? Um I had, I, I just had some local acts, uh, yeah, just some local people. Have you, yeah, have you been a comedy fan? Yeah, I mean, who doesn't like to laugh? Um, there's a lot of people, you know. But then again, there's there's also some bad comics. But I guess, you know, there's gonna be good and bad in every industry. Yeah, but it depends on what kind of humor you have, and you know, the diversity of it all. I think you have to be intelligent to be a good comedian. You have to. You have to be able to uh, see the world from a kind of a, a more intelligent perspective, in my opinion. I uh, it's funny because I I think that the reason I see the world in a comedic way and that I feel like I'm good at it is the same thing that fucks me up in real life sometimes. Like going being so like for comedy, you have to be like sure of yourself. You know, and, like, you have to be, even if your ideas are wrong, you have to be, like, this is right because I believe it. Right. And that fucks you up in real life sometimes, whether that be relationships, friendships. It's hard to see the world as someone else when, like, the whole point of this life for me is to, like, see the world my way. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you can, you can say the most ridiculous thing in the world, but if you sell it hard enough, people will will uh believe you or laugh or whatever the objective is. Yeah. Well, that's like art. I feel very uh jealous of people with artistic talent. Uh aka you. Um no, nah, don't 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 envy me, please. I I, I do. Nah. Because, yeah, because you well you one you're following your dream and like you're doing something that think about all the people who like started what you wanted to do and never got to the point that you did like it doesn't even matter what you get from it it's kind of like are you in this life doing the thing you want 
How did true, very true. Very good points. <laughs> Thank you for keeping it in perspective. Of course. But with art, like I the way that artists see the world, I don't want to speak for you, but it's like I don't have the patience to like see the fine details. I have to be I'm very go, 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 and I feel like I wish I could just calm down and like see the details of life, and that's what I really like in art. Mm. Yeah, I love details. I love to uh, create intricate things that that either give you a message or it's just in general cool to look at. Um, you know, like I like to play with lines and thick and thin lines and how they can work together to make it like whoa, like visually orgasmic yeah do you were what have you stuck to your style of art your your shirt is your art if you want to show it off yeah it's funny i've never i've never i think i've bought okay i think i've bought literally something on amazon twice my entire life and so it's just ironic that I'm wearing a Trillionaire Boys Club shirt with Bezos on it. <laughs> I don't. I'm not even his customer. <laughs> That's even better though, because you're profiting off of him and you're not even <laughs> giving him money. <laughs> I like you're that. You're double fucking him. You're he <laughs> no, he's he's, <laughs> he's definitely not feeling any fucking <laughs> from me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I think you're coming out on top in that equation. Yeah. <laughs> and you have hair. Yeah, I do. <laughs> hey, that's cool. <laughs> that's always a win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, this is fun, man. This Did is really <laughs> cool. I love what you're doing here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really lucky to have Ani and Irish to have s the space, but also I couldn't do without them. So how did you start the shop? They were telling me just a little bit because I wanted to know a little bit about it. you. It started in a subway. Oh yeah. Um, so I moved here, uh, 2011. No, 20. Yeah, 2011. And then I did. I was just odd, odd jobs for a year, basically barely making it. Um, Still making art during that time. I mean, when I could, yeah. Obviously, you know, I've always consistently done art all my life. Just like. When I had a regular job here, it was tougher. But um, I saw a guy, I saw a couple guys in the subway um, just, you know, throughout my commute in the first year. And I saw a couple guys like hustling their art or just like, like jewelry and just like random stuff in the subway. And I was like, well, um, I don't know exactly how I could get to that point, but I know that if I put my mind to it, I can like invest in making some prints of my work and then trying it out. And so that's what I did. I, I uh it was a combination of good fortune and and uh the 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 time that it took to start in the subway. That was that was a struggle in itself. That was probably that was probably the biggest struggle cuz I had to figure out exactly what my approach was going to be, what designs like what designs do I have to show people, which at the time wasn't much in the format that I do now. So, um, but that was 2012. That was eight years ago now. So, um, I remember the first time I brought my cart out ever, I set, I brought my cart and I was sitting by this dude, random guy. And he was like, Hey, what are you doing with this stuff? I was like, um, I'm actually really nervous right now. Cause I've never, like tried to sell my work in the subway before and this is my first night and i think he could tell how nervous i was and he just was like nah calm down and relax this is actually cool stuff i think i think you got a chance to do do some things with your art and i was like oh thanks and i was mad nervous and uh i i don't know what i just remember that conversation from that first night and um those are really important conversation <clears throat> that's like yeah. it's funny the parallels between that and comedy like going up on stage and feeling nervous the first yes. time and then having someone just be like nah like it's good and those people in life are important and that's like that points yes, you yes you say it's good fortune do you see uh good luck i mean do you see that no, as fortune, fortune fortune you yeah you don't see it as luck I mean, I think I don't. I see those things as if you follow your passion, like it leads you to the right. Yeah, I mean, 
I feel like luck is more of uh, you're born into a rich family or something like that. Luck is more like I don't even know if I believe in luck at all, really. Uh, I just I think that if you work hard enough and you have the vision, like things will unfold for you in some form or fashion. You have to pick and choose what battles you want and like who you want to trust and who you want to talk to, who you want to you know basically fuck with. Yeah. And so, um. The way I've done it is I kind of forced my success. Like every opportunity I've had, I've I've seen. Like if I see a window of opportunity, I will, sh- even if it's the most narrow path, I will shoot straight for it. And that's basically how I've got to you know living in Manhattan and having a shop next. Well, <laughs> yeah, no snitching having on. A, you don't have having a shop in yourself. Manhattan, of course. But uh, do you, that's the only way to success. Because if you don't, the only reason you don't listen to those voices telling you to go for it is like resistance in your mind, mm-hmm. and that's the only thing that really like holds you back. Like I remember times where it's like, why didn't I do that? That would have only led me to being more successful. Or if it didn't, I'll learn from that experience. People want to be like stagnant. Well, the way I see it is like. I moved to New York not to... Where are you originally from? I'm from Oklahoma originally, but I moved to Florida first, then I moved to Mississippi, and then I, I stayed in New Orleans for, like, weekends for, like, a year straight. Like, I've kind of floated around. I lived in Seattle, uh, Tacoma and Seattle area for, like, uh, about a, a year. Um, so I've kind of, like, floated around. But I've been in New York solid for now, uh for uh coming up on 10 years now so i'm yeah so you're originally from oklahoma yeah born and raised there was your that doesn't seem like a place where like artists would flourish exactly was your family like was your family with you doing art or not uh no i mean i was um well yeah i mean yeah i mean my they were dad, supportive of it oh yeah definitely my dad like my mom and dad were both supportive of my, me being an artist because it, they could see it was my passion. And, you know, I wasn't drawing stick figures, so they were like, all right, let's just keep going. Like, they were like, he's at least he's got a talent and he's passionate about it, so we support that. Um, now, I can see why some parents would not want to support that because it's like, hey, mom, I want to be an artist. And it's like, okay, really? Like, okay, son. It's like saying I want to be a a lottery draft pick in the NBA. Like, <laughs> it just doesn't happen often. Like, usually when artists say they're artists, they're actually, you know, they're like part time waiters or something like that. It's like, but I was able to create my own path of be becoming like a self sustaining artist, like full time. So, um, but a lot of the, the reason I have been able to do that is because I've had supportive um, parents. Um, yeah. I yeah. can't I, I can't really say anything bad about my parents all, other than we didn't really have much money but more I think more important than having money is the the emotional support you can give your child so Yeah, and you know. a little bit of my parents are very supportive too, but because my dad was a musician, so he kind of saw like, oh, if you felt like I didn't get the like support in my dream, so if I give that and then my mom I feel like I liked having a little bit of like, let me prove I can actually do this because she supported it, but she's also realistic. Like, man, that's a, that's another thing you just brought. You hit the nail on the head with that. I feel like motivation and your hunger and your ambition is is a lot of it's rooted in in dark times and like people that didn't believe in you and like I harness all of that energy into a very powerful nucleus, ready to unleash on the world. <laughs> so like. I have a very, I'm very ambitious, and uh, part of the reason is to like get back at people who didn't believe in me or, yeah, whatever the case may be, some bullshit you had to go through. You think about, um, yeah, you think about that when you're like, nah, I am doing this, especially when yeah, they're not, they're not like, doing uh, shit either. The Dragon Ball Z guy when he like unleashes. A <laughs> I don't even know Dragon Ball Z, but <laughs> I know what I don't either. But I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, I'm on. <laughs> 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 
when you opened when you opened up was it just prince or were you doing clothes yeah too? actually it was just prince when i first started in the, in the in the train i had some chicken wire around a, like a laundry basket and that sounds very oklahoma like, it, you you yeah, were bringing was, you were uh, bringing your home to new york yeah, i sure was <laughs> Nah, it was actually, it's not funny, it was sad. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what comedy is? It's pain plus it is, time it is, equals nah, it comedy? <laughs> actually, they, they say some of the most genius thoughts are rooted in pain or like some of the most, you know. What, that's my... It's, it's <laughs> madness, right? Like L- L- Robin Williams, perfect example. Complete genius, like just a madman, just a completely mad genius and... And you you could tell that a lot of that is rooted in like his dark energy, or, or maybe he knew too much, or whatever the case may be. But he was a very sad man at the end of it, and I think his genius was really r- probably very rooted in darkness. Like, yeah, like he was like the most fun, happy guy. But uh, sometimes that's the opposite of how your brain is working. Like, I think about that, like. If you you haven't seen me do stand up, but I'm a pretty, I'm funny, but you can my jokes are like personal dark, like everything goes back to something, and then I try to like you know be, I'm silly about it, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Well, that's where, but it's like a range, you know, like to get to that extra funny happy level, you kind of have to balance it, like the pendulum swings both right, ways, it right. Can't, and that's some people they don't get that way, but then they don't feel that darkness because right. their pendulum isn't swinging as wide. That's that's a perfect example. Like like some of the work that I do is dark, and it and it's like I don't know. There's something beautiful about dark. Like yeah, something. But, and you root it in like a. I don't want to say silliness because that comes across rude, but like in your serious artwork, it's still like. At, l- at least what I've seen, like the outside and w- online, it still has a bit of like cartoon, cartoonism, cartoonish, comedic twang. Comedic comedic twang. <laughs> Both. Yeah. Yeah. Really like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I have a, I have a, um, a character. His name is Injustice Man, and um, the premise basically is he. Like this lady's getting mugged, very, very unattractive, older. Uh, so it's so, okay. This is so not. <laughs> this is so not PC at all. This, I really don't care. You Especially in the year 2020, I thought of this. I thought of this. Wait, in like, we're recording this in 2001. It's yeah. it's all right. No, nah, yeah, I thought you like. I thought of this like in the early 2000s, but. So a lady's getting mugged and Injustice Man swoops down and um and he uh he's like standing there and, and the lady's like, Oh, it's Injustice Man <laughs> And uh he knocks the mugger out and she's super happy. She's like, Injustice Man, what could I ever do to repay you? <laughs> and so he smacks her and takes her purse and flies away. <laughs> so like <laughs> So like, but in the, in the year twenty twenty, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how that. Uh, no, that's sh- it's <laughs> it's funny though, because like, isn't that South Park can say really fucked up shit because they're cartoons? Like, cartoons can say more fucked up things, but also that's like, I don't think that's fucked up. So I have a <laughs> I have a joke that it went to like the front page of Comedy Reddit. Like, it's about school shootings and dodgeball like there's a correlation oh. about when sc- dodgeball stopped being taught and school shooting started and if they brought it back like the gym teachers would be wearing trench coats and they'd come, kick the door down with <laughs> balls and be like who's making fun of the gym teacher now oh. and kids are and it's really dark but i like do an act out and um but it's it's like the there's a, the the balance of it it's like that it's like the injustice man yes it's like in 2020 maybe too fuck like for some people (laughs) but the you can see that the pendulum swings the other way and that you're actually making fun of something bigger than that right 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 i hope people see that when they watch my bit (laughs) yeah because i I brought a girl to a show and she did not like that bit. She waited till I left the state, and then she wrote me this long message about it. 
then that was a, that was effective because it was thought provoking and I I feel like if I feel like art is art especially if it provokes emotion whether it's good or you know positive or negative emotion like if you if you've been provoked in some way like that's effective art to me whether it be comedy visual art or anything else who was ta- was it Brian talking about it last night future guest Brian um uh that like if you get negative com like if you put your work out there and you get negative comments that'll still like p- those comments push you up like you right it, like any, any publicity y- is good you exactly publicity. any publicity is good i used to think that phrase was any news was good news which is definitely not true <laughs> any news is definitely not that good news no <laughs> but all, not even the same thing. but all publicity is good publicity yeah do you do you like that with your shirt? Unless like, you're going to jail or something. That is true. Yeah. Hey, when you get out, <laughs> there's that's a, a lot of people have used jail to yeah, uh, yeah. push their life forward. I get so I have your mask that says the sound of trap music. Oh, oh nice. That's like my favorite. I get it quite all the time. People ask me what it is, like all the time. And this is a I'll get I'll get the points all together here. I'm a little stoned, so let me <laughs> let me get there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, rule number one: no drugs. I'm sorry, uh, but you were talking about all publicity is good publicity. Like you said, you just started with prints, and then you moved to clothing, and your yeah. clothing is very thought provoking and eye drawing, and like that. Even if people like, I don't think anyone would get offended by your art, but like people like like the bloody Van Gogh, people are going to look at that and be like, what the fuck is that? And that's like publicity everywhere you go with the clothes. Yeah. Did you, did you mean to get into like clothing or was that just, Um, I just thought it was a kind of a easier way than to, you know, I didn't have access to like a big studio with paints and canvases and like, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't have, access to any of that stuff I so the way i saw it was like what's relatively a cheap way to make your art you know get on people and then they wear it and then other people see it and it just spreads easier on clothes um so that's kind of like that's my that's not like the end game but it's uh it's basically like my starting point and uh now that i've kind of like really now that i'm like neck deep in in clothing i'm like really itching to uh do other stuff and get out of it not get out of it i'll never i'll never get out of it at this point but um like literally 20 years from now i'll be doing the same thing on with the clothes like you'll have an old but I'll man be doing jeff way bezos more shirts shit. i'll be <laughs> doing i'll be the jeff bezos of art <laughs> i'll be doing way more shit some dude won't be buying your shit but it'll have your face on it <laughs> yeah, well, that'll be the R.I.P. shirt. That, that'll be at my funeral. We'll but make some shirts. That's actually a dr- like not a dr- but I love clothing like mer- merch. Like I love merch. Like mm-hmm. that hoodie right there is from an. Uh, can I? Yeah, can I see it? I'll hold it up to the camera. This is Isaac Paeo, but he does it for this rap group Griselda. He does a lot of their art. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but I love merch because, like, this is merch. This is merch. But I, they get like artists to do their stuff, and like cool art T-shirts like that. It you have to be like you. It has to come from real art. But that's how like you put it out there. Now, oh, there you go. Thank you. Uh, that's the the art that like people wear. Like that's the only way. Right. That's the big way right now to get it out there. Mm. It yeah, was- yeah. Especially now with Shopify, like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually about to drop a new website uh, tonight. Are you? My, my website's changing tonight. Oh, yeah. d- what, what's your, what's your website? We'll put it up. Uh, NewYorkFuckery.com. NewYorkFuckery.com. Spelled out. Fuckery. N e w y o r k fuckery dot com f u c k e r y correct 
period. You know, the dot, not the one in the middle. The Can dot. we get another uh, another you. flex bomb? <laughs> I just had to prove I could spell on my podcast. I've gotten a lot of emails. Can you spell? And you're stoned, so you really get per- brownie points for that. Exactly. Special brownies. Special pot brownie points. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, this show's called Bucked Up. Yeah, this year, uh, 2021, I want to do some public displays of art and uh get like people get crowds around and look they're like what the fuck is this like i would love to do that you have a mural right now yeah so i'm actually learning about it as we speak Um, (laughs) like i got fucked up and i painted a mural i had no (laughs) idea (laughs) what the fuck actually let me give you the most (laughs) oh okay okay so this is what we're doing um i got basically a whole team uh i just got the text so i got the whole team like i'm gonna have help with my mural because we got to get it up quick over the weekend i just learned because the 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 department of the department of buildings okay so we're gonna get we're gonna get the scaffolding delivered friday so we're gonna get the scaffolding delivered Friday, and then we're gonna put the uh, mural up this weekend. And I'm gonna have a team of people helping me because we got to get it up and down. We got to get it up and down over the weekend. So up and down over the weekend. Yeah, because uh, the Department of Buildings might because it's like a precarious position that I'm gonna be in. Like the Department of Buildings might write a ticket. So for your life, they're like this yeah, dude. Yeah, looks, yeah, this yeah. Dude. Like <laughs> he went splat. Yeah. <laughs> They just I'm gonna put the like, ticket on your dead body. Yeah. <laughs> like whoever whoever's around can pay this. <laughs> Actually, that's this is a this is crazy that you're interviewing me right now as I'm learning this shit because like this is like the biggest break of my life. I've congratulations. Never, thank you. Congratulations. It's, it's going to be on Broadway between 11th and 12th Street. Oh, we're gonna have to. It's this weekend. Yeah, Damn. yeah, yeah. Um, if for You'll some reason, thing. like, if for some reason the cops stop us, then you're gonna have to cancel this whole co- podcast because <laughs> I'll be way too embarrassed to uh, <laughs> talk they, shit. You're in court and they're using this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's pub- all this publicity's is the, good publicity. This is the cross examination. <laughs> <laughs> They're using my podcast in court, and everyone's like, "Oh, I need so, to." Subs- hey, everyone in court right now, subscribe, listen to the Bucked Up podcast. It's wherever you get your podcast. Shout out to Rikers. And I'm not high, New York. It's not legal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's exciting. Uh, Jersey just legalized it, so New York is the pressure's on you, f- corrupt bastards. Yeah, I've been smoking in New York a good amount though. They don't really. So you're, you're not in jail. You're all right. <laughs> that's white. That's that's white privilege. Though. Everybody <laughs> smokes out here, man. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, in Boston so. too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. This le- is it's a uh, medicinal, not legal. No, it's right? re- it's recreational. It's rec- you can now? just go. In, you're like you could drive to Boston right now. Right, right. It's expensive as fuck. Really? How much is an eighth? An eighth is. Um, oh okay. So so it's a 20% tax oh, on all Sorry. places. So like in New Jersey it's going to be a 20% tax. Okay. So an eighth is 55. Okay. And then a ta- so it's like 70 bucks an eighth. Wow. It's good shit, but right, it's like right. not worth it, you right, know what right, I mean? Right. It's not. So do you think the black market is just going to continue to flourish? 100%. Yeah. Except if you go up to Maine where it's not recreational, it's only medicinal, but it's really a- easy to get a card and then you can get a half for 130 bucks of like r- yeah. like real good shit. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Maine Maine seems to be a state that kind of goes on its own tra- p- uh path. Kind of like Vermont, like two states where like they have like more of an independent take on things. I like that. So you were talking about your ambition, and that's how I feel too. Like smoking, like people will be like, I feel like if, even if people who listen to this, they'll be like, oh, like uh, he's he doesn't like I don't know, he's a stone. You know what I mean? Like you, but it gives me ambition. Like it helps me. It helped me learn how to run. Like as I was telling you before this podcast. Like I was not an athletic kid, but then once I started smoking, I'm now a runner. Like I'd run 
when I'm not in New York, like 5K a day, smart. three to five miles. That's very smart. It makes me focus. Like, cause it's I'm going to very... extend your lifespan, too. If yeah. You, you know, just as long as you're not eating pig lard every day. I was actually I like crazy food. We're going on so many tangents. I I would just went <laughs> to the I just went to this Asian restaurant um in Lowell, shout out Simply Kamir. It's an amazing but I was eating a soup that had beef lung, it had tripe in it, it which is a stomach lining. It had a pork blo- congealed pork blood in it. And I love that sh- I'll eat anything. I've had brain, I've had cow brain, I've yeah. eaten all Have that. you had squeal abscess? No, I don't even it know. A joke, I don't know. <laughs> I probably, I would. I've had <laughs> the other night. I was at a bar and I was two thirds the way done with my Jack and Coke, and I realized that there were six fruit flies in it. So mm. I had ten. I must have drank like ten <laughs> fruit flies the other night. That's how bad he wanted that last sip. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not finish that. But it was like, uh, like I was picking them off my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's we all have our highlights and our lowlights, you know. But you're talking. I've, you see, <laughs> <laughs> I've had some high, high, very highs and very lows. But like, you just got that mural. You have a shop. Like, you're fucking ambitious, and you get that shit done. It's not like yeah, you can still smoke and get shit done. Oh no, one hundred percent. I smoke every day. Exactly, yeah. and you can still get your shit done. Yeah, look at that. You're you're more successful than like. A lot of other people who want to be at the place you are, and you smoke. And it's like you still get that shit done. I don't know. I yeah. so I don't know why. I just like that was a weird little. No, I mean yes. Uh, well, well, we grow. We grew up like in a world where people were like, "Oh, drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. Bad, 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 bad." It's like, no, they're not. Or if, are, it, okay. I think anything in moderation is fine. Yeah. Like. Even moderation. Even even mushrooms. Yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> Acid. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like those are actually healthy for you if you do them in, in, you know, every once in a while. Do you feel that? you? So at the beginning, you were talking about the intricacies of art and, like, the details. Do you feel... Do you still create art like that with, like, the sacred geometry? Do you try to do... No, I don't do any of that, but I do love to play with lines and make intricate things to where the viewer is like, damn, this, like... This must have took this guy hours and hours to do. You know, well thought out, well executed lines. Um, I love making things that, like, when it moves, you're, it, like, kind of hypnotizes you because of, like, yeah. of all the lines. You're just like, whoa. Like, is, what is your mural going to be like? I'm going to have to tell you to come see me make it first perfect yeah no no details on no, that. this is the weekend if you want to come by like, i would how, love to. how long are you in town uh no I, I, we're leaving thursday ah all right damn will you post pictures oh yeah I'll, all right. yeah i'll do like an instagram live or something and i'll yeah. i'll share that because i i really i wish i could see it because yeah yeah no nah, you will I'll, I'll definitely be throwing it up so do you not like the like business side of it like you have mm. to deal with the fucking mm. bi- bi- buildings department and all that shit oh well, or do you have to get like zoning permits and stuff for your mural? <clears throat> well, we're gonna have to probably avoid that subject for now. Oh, just yeah. because hey, if you're listening in court, even subscribe to the Bucked <laughs> Up podcast. <laughs> Cross yeah, examination, no. or I guess even for a store, like I would, I love clothes. The, I remember why I wanted to talk about merch is because, like, a dream of mine is to do like a line of like clothing for bucked up like that's like like a real dream like i love merch so much that like i want cool merch not like Mm -hmm. silly comedy merch but like streetwear like a three-eyed me or or like anything that people would actually wear Mm. as merch for the podcast because then you can put yourself out there maybe i can do like a caricature of you or something that'd be be fucking amazing that'd be really amazing i I could yeah, yeah i could easily do that but you have to go th- like to have a store. You have to deal with a lot of like the business side of it, right? Yeah, I mean, do you outsource that, or did you have to do that all on your own? Well, I ha- I, th- I have a a guy who's um. You, have you met Steve? Yeah, the older guy. So he takes on the operations uh a lot more, like as far as all the administration stuff that I I just would 
rip my hair out if I had to do all that. So Yeah, you just want to focus on the art. Yeah, so luckily I have like kind of a, a partner in that sense. Um that I can kind of delegate those kind of responsibilities to and uh focus more on just being an artist. So I'm trying to like branch out different things that bring in different incomes from different angles so that I can f- stay focused on making artwork full time and not really having to worry about too much of the other stuff, just kind of automating other channels of income and like I'm I'm getting there. So yeah. you know So you can be your creative mind. I can be my creative self. Yeah. yeah. Be in the uh flow state. You know what I Yeah, yeah. I'm actually I'm actually a lot closer to it than I than I used to be. So I'm get I'm I'm getting closer and closer to where I can truly just sit back and I have a team around me that can take on the things that need to be taken on outside of the art itself. So I'm 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 pretty close to having that team really assembled and and established. So once I get that done, then my artistic output is going to skyrocket cuz I'm going to be able to do so much more and uh focus my time more on that stuff so i think that's where the ambition comes in where like i don't i don't want to just like sit around and smoke weed i want to sit around and smoke weed and make art like Mm -hmm. i want to like i I love being productive i love making new stuff Uh, it's just fun it's it's more more than anything it's just fun and then when i put it out there People may like it. They may not like it. Honestly, I don't really care. Like the whole point is, like I'm, I'm having fun with it. So yeah, it but, puts you, you know, in that flow state. Yeah, yeah. But I have a really good track record of the things that make it fun when I, when I put it out there for people to see. They usually like it. So yeah, you have a whole. You grew from a chicken wire and a <laughs> bucket and a, the subway to a real a store, and you're about to have a mural. Like, did you when you look back? Like, aren't I? Did you see that you were going to be here? Or were you, is this kind of um, like, did you stumble into being able to almost no, be here? No, see, like, New York was always a thing that was such a an intangible thing for me as a kid. Because I had family in Cali. I had family in Florida. So it was like my New York City as a kid was Cali or Florida. Like, that was something that was tangible, that was possible. Mm-hmm. And... um so when I went, I moved to uh, Orlando at 19, um, I thought that that was like my big moment. Like, this is it. Like, I'm in a big city, blah, blah, blah. But many McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's later, I realized that Orlando was not for me. And I didn't know it, but New York was definitely my, my, my pearl city. I just didn't even, I still didn't even know it even when I was in Florida. It's just like I met I met a couple guys that moved to Queens in Florida. They grew up with my cousin, so they were like, they all knew each other. So that was cool. So I made that connection. Then I moved to Mississippi because of Hurricane Katrina ravaging the area. And so I was there to, like, help rebuild with my dad. And that's when I met another guy. I I, I also worked at a grocery store, working for my dad and a grocery store. I met a guy in the stock section of the grocery store from the Bronx and he was like the grittiest Bronx like the the stereotypical gritty Bronx guy he's I still I still talk to him today he lives in Indiana of all places now but I still talk to him today every once in a while and uh I would always ask him about the Bronx and like growing up out there in New York I was always fascinated with New York so I would just like bless bless you and I was just like fascinated with New York I just like he saw he saw the hunger in my eyes and plus he loved my art because you know i've been doing art this whole time yeah. so i would show him what i had done to that point or whatever and he loved it he was an artist too so we stayed in touch and he ended up moving back to the bronx and i was like hey hey i called him up one day and i'm like hey i know we've been talking about this for months and months and months but i finally have the money and i finally have the time to come up there so i'm just like i'm gonna book a bus like i took a bus from mississippi to new york and uh he was like yeah come now come now like now is a perfect time or like whenever it was so uh it was actually 10 years ago this month that's crazy yeah. and that's the same time that you're getting your mural right ah see i got to i got to mention that 
That's oh. but that's the fortune thing. I don't want to interrupt. But that's yeah, yeah. you're there fixing Katrina, and you meet this dude at the uh, box in the store. Like, I'm happy you said it wasn't luck because I don't believe in luck. Like all that shit points you because you followed your passion. Like that's yeah. like it all points you to this place. Yeah, definitely. And that it's ten years that you fucking are getting your mural. Yeah, I, I feel like the universe will line itself up for you if you work hard and you're smart with your decisions and. Who knows? I feel like I, I could be even further now if I would have been had made smarter decisions. But um, overall, I think I've done a good job. So, um, shout yeah. out to you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, What's is murals your next? Is that your next endeavor? I hope so. I wanna, I wanna do this first one so that I can start showing other landlords what's up. And uh, yeah, I think that's like really. That's the really the best way to get around the politics and bullshit of like, oh, you know what ce- what celebrity can I hit up and have them? I don't. I hate that shit. I hate celebrity culture. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't. Want, I want them to like see my stuff and, and fuck with me. So the best way to do that, in my opinion, is a ads or b big ass murals all over the city. <laughs> Because that way I can avoid everyone and just say, fuck you, look at my mural. Not like, you know, I'm not hostile or anything, but like, you know, fuck you, pay me type thing. Like, yeah. You put I, in enough like, time I'm and not you put kiss, in enough work. I'm not kissing your ass because some high executive gave you an acting job and now you're a movie star. I don't care. You probably didn't even work that hard for it. Fuck you. Yeah. Like, I don't want to kiss your ass. No, you worked hard for where you are, yeah, so why like, shouldn't the... Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's it's probably more of a... more of a pride thing. <laughs> no, but isn't... That's what drives you, though. Like, yeah. you, you looking back and being like, nah, I'm going to prove all those people wrong. Like, it's yeah. still happening. Like, them doing that to you now is that what is what's going to push you in 10 years because yeah. you're not going to think about like the littler things right that, but it just keeps growing i've even had instances where i've taken a small tiny fraction of a beef and i've like turned it into a, a real beef just because i want something to like fight i want i want something to like I want something. To you have. watch that Michael Jordan <laughs> doc. You watch want, that Michael Jordan have, documentary. Yeah, like I want to have some kind of motivation to f- like say "fuck you." <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. And it's just like, yeah. And then you, I oh, I write my best jokes or I create my when I'm angry. Like I have yeah. to get into like this yeah, angry yeah, yeah. state, and then I'll be like, I'm gonna fucking do it. But right. you have to have. That's what Michael Jordan did. Uh, did you watch The Last Dance? I actually didn't, but I've been a Jordan fan like yeah. all my life. Like I've I've known about like Jordan was like basically m- when I was a kid, I would watch Jordan with my dad. So and yeah, I am that old. Um <laughs> but yeah, I would like that was like prime time for me as a kid, so I know exactly I know all about his mentality. Yeah. Well, I told I'm not a basketball fan, and then I just randomly watched that documentary, and I feel so stupid saying this, but it's funny watching that and being like, you know, this Michael Jordan guy's really inspirational, right? Because yeah. everyone's like, of course he is. He's the most well-known basketball player ever, and like he was known for that. But I had never like paid attention to basketball, so I'm yeah. like, man, this I, Michael that's, Jordan guy, he's that's actually, really yeah. That's actually a good point that you brought up because I feel like I take that like Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan killer mentality and 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 I apply it in a competitive way in my art. Like I want to be the best, and I want to. I do want to prove that I'm the best and I do want to like just kill it. And I want to like, I want to, you know, but at the same time, I also want to take my ambition and hopefully if I'm like as successful as I want to be, then I, then that's when I can really start to give back to the community and do things to like fundraise for school or whatever it may be. Like I'm really interested in, in giving back too. So it's not, it's not all about me. But right now, it has to be. But you have to prove it to yourself before yeah. you can prove it to others. It's funny that you you were talking about the basketball and art are your two things and how you use the basketball mentality in your art. So, like, 
comedy and rap are my two things. Okay, yeah. I would never See, rap. Like there's but parallels I, with that because rap is a very competitive and exactly like, they do the the um the beat bat the battle the battling the battling bat- and yeah, you like, use and you use the like darkness to get that. But even even with merch, like the reason I like merch is because like it's the rap thing. Like I love that. The reason I like my comedy to be is like I use rap mentality in my comedy. Like I'm gonna give the least amount of fucks while giving the most fuck I can. And I know we have to end pretty yeah, soon. She, she's calling me. Um, but um, that's why I love... That's the parallels. Like, you use the basketball for that, and then I use the rap for that. Yeah. We plug... We'll, we're ending this early, but we're going to do more filming at um, your shop. Yeah, and yeah, we're yeah, going yeah. to add that to the end of the episode. So um, cool. do you want to give your plugs real quick? Um newyorkfuckery.com I mean you'll find my Instagram and all that on there so just click on that perfect uh, at Sam C. Buck at Bucked Up Podcast and um, you can check this out every Thursday thank you so much for being on